I had a fast slap to rehab by following a plan made for professional athletes aimed at getting them back to competing in record time. It was taught to me by the elite physical therapists that treat professional football players in Australia with one goal, get the players back on the field as fast as possible without surgery. Their approach differs immensely from the lame and ineffective exercises that most general population physical therapists prescribe. That's probably because your physical therapist doesn't work with professional athletes and the patients they see don't take their sport and workouts as seriously as you and I do. Get the full strategy with my free slap tear rehab blueprint. Just click or tap the screen to get it. Most people think they should avoid exercise if it causes pain after a shoulder injury, but this is a terrible idea. Abstaining from strength training when you have a slap tear means you begin to lose muscle mass, not just in your shoulder, but throughout your body. This is a disaster because then when you return to training, you're now dealing with much more than the aftermath of a slap tear. And the only way to get back to doing the sports that you love is to make the shoulder so strong that the slap tear isn't an issue. This video is about manipulating intensity to allow you to continue working out. Intensity equals how heavy you are lifting. Going from a 10 pound dumbbell to a 20 pound dumbbell is an example of increasing intensity. And going from a 10 pound dumbbell to a five pound dumbbell is an example of decreasing intensity. If the exercises in your slap tear rehab program cause pain, simply reducing the intensity can be enough for you to work out pain-free. In the early stages of slap tear rehabilitation, you may need to reduce the intensity so much that it barely feels like you're lifting any weights. People often let their ego get in the way. I can normally bench 200 pounds. Benching a 44-pound barbell is ridiculous. Well, no, it's not. In fact, failing to reduce the intensity to a level that you can do your workouts pain-free might be the reason why you're not making improvements with your rehab. We want to find the baseline weight you can lift without causing any pain and then build up from there. If you continue to lift heavy enough that you repeatedly experience pain, you are reinforcing to the nervous system that lifting weights is dangerous and your shoulder will stay locked down. On the contrary, when you perform a pain-free workout, you reinforce to the nervous system that it's safe to lift weights and the shoulder lockdown will gradually ease off, meaning that the inflammation will reduce, the tightness in your muscles will reduce and your pain-free range will increase. Feeling a little pain or discomfort during a set is okay. As long as the pain doesn't persist after the workout. And the main thing that we want to look at is a change in your baseline pain. When you're at rest, doing nothing. If your baseline pain is increasing after your workouts, then we need to alter any of the five slap tear rehab variables. To learn our comprehensive slap tear rehab strategy taught to us by elite sports physical therapists, just click or tap the screen and grab the slap tear rehab blueprint. It's totally free. And in the next video of this series, we're going to talk about how to manipulate volume in order to get pain-free workouts and keep moving forward with your training.